All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, it's 8.30, uh, let's get started. Uh, before we start, uh, we're gonna have our first lab session this week. Okay. Uh, the first lab will be very simple. Uh, we mix some cement paste with different type of uh, water cement ratio, uh, chemical admixtures and uh, mineral admixtures and trying to observe the flow ability. Okay, so this will be a lab demonstration. Okay, so uh, please join me for Monday group at 2.30 today. Okay. So today we're gonna discuss uh, another major component of concrete, which is uh, chemical mixtures. So last time, We discuss mineral mixtures such as flash, silica film, and slag. Okay. Uh, the difference between chemical and mineral mixtures are this. So, first of all, chemical mixtures do not replace cement. Okay. Uh, the dosage of chemical mixtures is very small. Uh, this is kind of different from mineral mixtures. Okay. For example, uh, we use around five to 15% for silica film, 20 to 40% normally for uh, flash. But for chemical mixtures, they only use sometimes 1%, sometimes even less. Okay. So generally, chemical mixtures do not replace cement. They also have a great effect on fresh property mining. Okay. For example, they can make the country very workable, uh, increase workability, or they can increase or reduce the setting time of concrete. So this is belong to fresh properties. They may also improve the processing of materials. Okay, uh, but this should not affect the mechanical behavior of concrete uh, significantly. Okay, for example, they do not change the final strengths of concrete uh, as significantly as mineral mixtures. Okay. They may also help improve the durability of concrete. Uh, we're gonna discuss uh, air in training agent, corrosion inhibitors, and how these other mixtures can improve the concrete durability. All right, so that's a several type of chemical mixtures. Uh, we're gonna discuss aerin training agent, uh, set controlling admixtures, uh, both uh, retarder, uh, which will increase setting time, or accelerator, which will reduce the setting time of concrete. Uh, we're gonna discuss water reducing agent, uh, plasticizing admixtures, or some other uh, special application mixtures, such as corrosion inhibitors. So this table summarizes uh, the major type and the beneficial effect of uh, chemical mixtures. Uh, workability, uh, which is specified for by ASTM. So ASTM is American Society of Testing and Materials. Okay. So they have different committees setting standards for four different types of materials. So we have water reducing admixtures, plasticizer, area training admixtures for workability. For set of controlling admixtures, we have accelerator, we have retarders, uh, you know, and also for strengths, uh, which is belong to water reducing agents, and also durability, such as air in training agent, uh, water reducing admixtures, uh, which may also uh, improve the concrete durability, uh, besides uh, enhance the strength of concrete, and also corrosion inhibitors. Okay, 
Okay, the first elementary uh, we're going to discuss today is air entraining agent. Okay, so these elementary put tiny air bubbles inside the concrete. And let's see why we need to put these air bubbles in concrete and uh, uh, what benefit this will provide. Concrete in cold, wet climates undergoes many freeze-thaw cycles during the fall, winter, and spring. Since during a freeze-thaw cycle, no matter how low the water-cement ratio, concrete is somewhat porous. Water is able to enter the spaces and freeze. When water freezes, it expands. When there is no room for this expansion, stresses develop inside the concrete. The concrete relieves these stresses by cracking. Over many freeze-thaw cycles, these stress cracks appear as surface cracks or scaling. For quality concrete in freeze-thaw areas, an air entraining admixture should be added to the mix. Entrained air provides millions of microscopic bubbles of stress relief when water freezes and expands. Air entrainment is what makes this weather-exposed Chicago driveway different from the floors not exposed to the weather in this multi-story building, and even this driveway in Florida, which isn't exposed to the many freeze or cycles. So air and training agent is mainly used for uh, reduced uh, a physical attack called freeze saw, okay? but also be, uh, maybe beneficial to resist some other chemical attacks, such as a classic reaction and soft attack. Uh, we mentioned a soft attack in early lectures, uh, but uh, not ASR, uh, we're going to talk about this in much more details in future lectures on concrete durability. Okay. In previous lectures, we know concrete is uh, strong under compression, but weak under tension. So the tensile strength of concrete is pretty low. Okay. And the concrete is susceptible to free salt because uh, concrete is porous. Okay. Water can easily get into a concrete, but when water frees, it will expand. So 9% increase in volume when water becomes ice. Okay. So uh, this expanded volume will cause concrete to crack if the volume cannot go any, anywhere. Okay. So when they reduce water to cement ratio of concrete, uh, the concrete permeability will be lower. Okay. Uh, the freeze out resistance will be higher. Okay. But for any concrete, we have the so-called capillary pores, uh, which will be filled with water. Okay. And when the water in the capillary pores freeze, uh, the volume will try to go somewhere. If we have this empty air bubbles uh, by introduced air entraining agent. So the expanded volume will be going into these empty air bubbles. So the tensile stress will be released. So the concrete will no longer be cracked. With all these empty air bubbles, uh, the ice will crack the concrete. Okay. So that's the major reason why they put air entraining agent uh, if the country will experience some uh, free thaw cycles. Okay, so again, uh, the water, when it becomes ice, uh, the water will expand. So uh, in the empty air bubbles, uh, we may find some ice formed air on the air, uh, air bubbles, so the stress will be released. We can also see from these uh, SEM photos, we can see air ice formed inside empty airs. So the stress will be released. Okay. So air entraining agent, uh, the molecule is uh, a kind of surface active molecule. Okay. Uh, it will create and stabilize small air bubbles. We call that air in trained air, uh, the size of the air is very small. So you can see from here, 0 0.05 millimeter to around one millimeter. Okay. 
So the dosage of air in training agent is very low. Okay. On the two end of the molecule, we have hydrophilic, which means uh, that end likes water. The other end is hydrophobic, or uh, hates water. So because nature of the molecule, the air bubbles will be generated and also stabilized inside the concrete. Okay. The figure on the right is showing us, uh, depending on air content as a percentage, if we increase the air content, uh, concrete will become more durable. Okay. So we have a so-called durability factors, okay, uh, which is uh, defined as this. Okay, let me show you. So the durability factors, uh, DF, uh, is defined as P times N over 300. Okay, so P is a percentage of uh, initial dynamic young uh, modulus after n number of free thought cycles. So percentage of initial dynamic modulus after n cycles. Okay. And n is the number of free saw cycles. Okay. So if there's low reduction on dynamic modulus, uh, then the durability factors will be higher. Okay. So when we increase air content, from zero to up to six, 7%, uh, the concrete become more durable uh, because the reason we just mentioned. Okay. But that's not always the case. Right. Uh, so here shows two more figures. One is how uh, so-called spacing factor affect durability factor. Okay. Uh, spacing factor is defined as so the average distance between from any point in the cement paste to the edge of the nearest voice. So basically uh, is the space, how easy the uh, air bubbles can be found. Okay. So the higher the spacing factor, uh, we have more distance from any point in the cement paste to the edge of the nearest void. So if we increase spacing factor, concrete will become less durable. So we increase air content, uh, concrete become more durable. As we can see from here, the durability factor increase is showing the blue curve. However, after around 8%, uh, if we further increase air content, uh, the durability factor will be lower. The reason for that is because, sorry. Okay. So initially, when we increase air content from zero to 8%, uh, due to the air bubbles, the stress will be released. However, if we further increase air content, the compressive stress will be much lower. As we can see from here, the green line, the compressive stress will be continue to go low when we increase air content. So beyond 8%, uh, the strength of the concrete will be too, too low, so it cannot resist any tensile stress. So as a result, the durability factor will be lower. So we have optimal dosage of air content, which is around 7 8%, which will have the highest durability factor. Right. 
So the spacing factor is the ratio of air to cement. Okay, so here shows two concrete with different volume of aggregate cement and the air content. Okay, the air content is 8% for the first concrete and 4% for the second concrete. But the air spacing is basically the same because the air spacing is the ratio of air over cement. Okay, so the ratio of air to cement is more important compared with air content by itself. So air neutrality agent is introduced to concrete to reduce the free soil damage. Uh, that's a different type of frost damage, okay, uh, which we will discuss in more details uh, in future lectures. Uh, for example, uh, the free salt can attack cement paste. Sometimes they can also attack aggregate if the aggregate is porous. So in that case, uh, we call that free salt damage uh, decrack. Okay. Sometimes uh, this free salt damage is only limited to the top surface of the concrete, not inside the concrete. Uh, this happened when we have uh, de-icing solution in the concrete pavement, okay, uh, which is not common here in Hawaii, but uh, you know, when we have de-icing solution, uh, the salt uh, from de-icing solution will make the concrete uh, susceptible to uh, free salt damage only to the top surface. So we call that scale, scaling damage or scaled concrete surface. Uh, again, we will talk about this in much more details in future lectures. So air intruding admixtures uh, is specified by ASTM Committee C260 or ASHTO, which is another uh, uh, standard setting organization. So uh, air intruding agent may improve uh, durability of concrete exposed to free soil damage uh, from de-icing solution, heating damage. Okay. Uh, may also improve durability to uh, sulfate attack and also alkalacidic reaction, uh, which is a chemical attacks from alkali from the cement paste to the silica from a certain type of aggregate. Whenever we have volume expansion in hardened concrete, uh, that expanded volume may, may cause concrete to crack. So uh, if that's the case, the air entraining agent may be beneficial to reduce this type of attacks. Okay. Because uh, the air entraining agent introduced tiny air bubbles, uh, which is in spherical shape. So they may it may also improve the concrete workability. Okay. So these air bubbles will behave like sand with you know, smooth surface, uh, you know, we call that ball bearing effect. It will reduce friction between the coarse aggregate and make the concrete more workable, uh, more flowable. Okay. Right. So that is uh, air in training agent. The next one uh, is set controlling admixtures. Okay. It can either increase setting time, uh, in that case we call that a retarder, or reduce the setting, setting time, uh, we call that accelerator. To slow setting time and minimize cracking in hot weather, a retarding admixture should be added to the mix. In very cold weather, Hydration and strength gain may slow or stop completely. To place concrete for this high rise in winter, an accelerating admixture may be needed to speed the concrete's set time and strength gain. All right, so before we talk about uh, accelerator or retarder, uh, let's review uh, the chemical reaction of cement. Okay. So here is old slide showing us the heat of hydration of C3S. And we know we have five 
different stage. Okay, from stage one, hydrolysis to stage two, uh, the dormant period, to stage three, accelerating stage, stage four, decelerating stage, and the final stage, which is diffusion controlled steady state. Okay, and we know the reason for the second stage, the dormant period is. Uh, the system wait for the concentration of the ions, such as calcium, hydroxide ions, to achieve the certain threshold concentrations. So after that, we have initial set of concrete, uh, which is the beginning of the stage three, and the final set occurs at the end of stage three. Uh, let's first look at accelerators. Uh, that's two type of accelerators. Okay, uh, the first one is called QuickSet, uh, which is used for emergency repair. So QuickSet can set a concrete in a few minutes. Okay, so this type of accelerator working by increased reaction of C3A. Okay, uh, we know the reaction speed of C3A is the fastest. The second one is C3S. So quick set increase C3A reaction. So the second time of concrete uh, will only be a few minutes. The second type is called regular accelerators. So it accelerates C3S reaction okay, uh, by reduced the induction period, which is stage two here. The dormant period. Okay. By shortening the stage two uh, and also increased hydration rate in stage three and four, okay, it can set the concrete faster, not in a few minutes, but in uh, like, for example, 30 minutes or one hour. Okay. So it will accelerate normal setting time and also uh, early stress uh, development will be faster. So it is beneficial during winter concreting because it will accelerate the chemical reaction, increase the temperature of concrete. So offset uh, the winter uh, concreting, so increase the temperature of concrete. Uh, calcium chloride could be used uh, or calcium nitride are commonly used, uh, but uh, we'll mention calcium chloride cannot be used for uh, still reinforced concrete due to corrosion concerns. Okay. All right. uh, the type of accelerators could include calcium salt, uh, inorganic salt, or organic compound including calcium formide or some other solid materials also include calcium. Okay. Uh, the reason every accelerator has calcium is because it will reduce the stage two induction period. Okay. Remember for the dormant period, induction period, uh, the system wait for the concentration of calcium and hydroxide to reach a certain level. By introduce external calcium, the time to achieve this threshold concentration is shorter. So we reduced uh, the time to, re to reach the initial set time. Okay. So again, it will accelerate the rate of hydration, uh, reduce setting time, and also really age strength gain. Okay. Uh, calcium chloride accelerators uh, is not used for reinforced concrete because it will cause uh, the steel reinforcement to corrode. Okay. Uh, again, we'll talk about this uh, when we talk about corrosion and other durability issues of concrete. Okay. Uh, it may also increase the shrinkage. Okay. So uh, because of that, calcium chloride accelerator cannot be used for uh, steel reinforced concrete.
So typical application of accelerators. So we can uh, expedite the start of finishing operation, uh, reduce the time required for proper curing and protection. So reduce the curing time and uh, increase the rate of early strength. Uh, if early, high early strength is something we want. Uh, we can also remove the formwork earlier. Okay, uh, we can do early opening for the construction service. Okay. Things like that. Yes. Right. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, I wasn't asked. Yeah, my bad. Uh, okay, no problem. So that is accelerator. Uh, let's look at retarder next. So retarder is opposite of accelerator. It will increase setting time. Okay. So if we do not want a high temperature in concrete, for example, in mass pouring, uh, we may use retarder to offset the high temperature. Uh, we can also extend the workable time of concrete by increase the setting time. For example, if we have traffic delay, uh, we may introduce retarder in the concrete so the concrete will set later. Okay. So some of retarder can also increase the workability of concrete. Retarder works by slowing down C3S reaction by extending the induction period or a dormant period, uh, stage two, okay, by forming a coating around the C3S particles. Okay. Uh, most of retarder are organic materials with a long chain of molecule. So this molecule will wrap around uh, the C3S particles, so uh, make the hydration product harder to form around uh, C3S. So increase the setting time. The organic molecule may also absorb on the nuclear of calcium hydroxide and uh, reduce the speed of its growth. Uh, it may also slow down the C3A reaction by uh, absorbing on the C3A hydration product, okay. uh, which is more complicated. Um, but uh, in this class, you just need to remember uh, retarder work on by increase the induction period on a stage two. So the major type of retarder, uh, as we can see, uh, almost all uh, organic materials, okay, such as lignosulfic acid, hydroxy carboxylic acid and salt, or table sugar, okay, uh, regular coke, or Pepsi can be used to increase the setting time, but not diet one. Okay. Uh, we can use retarders uh, in situations such as traffic delay, hot weather concrete, uh, uh, we can reduce the temperature, or we control the setting of large structure unit, uh, namely the cold joint, uh, or we have difficulties placing the concrete, or we need a long time to uh, finish the concrete. All right, so that is a uh, retarder. Right. So the next chemical mixtures is water reducer. Uh, Sometimes we call that super plasticizer. Okay. Chemical admixtures give concrete properties it normally wouldn't have. To make a mix more fluid, a water reducer can be added. Water reducers make the concrete flow easier from the pump, through the hose, to this elevated slab in this warehouse without increasing the water content. If a water reducer is not used, pump hoses can become clogged and blocked, delaying the placement of concrete. Water reducers are also used for concrete in areas that are difficult to place, such as around congested reinforcing steel. Okay, so by its name, uh, water reducer can reduce the water content, uh, depending on the type of water reducer, uh, you know, from five to more than 20%. Okay, so uh, by reduce the water content, we reduce the water to cement ratio. As a result, uh, the strength of concrete will increase. Okay, uh, if the goal is not to, in, to reduce the water content, 
by introducing water reducer, we can increase workability, uh, make the concrete more flowable. Okay, so in that case, we call that plasticizer. Okay, so most water reducers are uh, organic materials, okay, such as salt of ignosulfonate or hydroxycarboxylate acid, okay, or some polymeric materials. So that's a different uh, action mode uh, explaining how this water reducer can improve the workability of concrete. So one of them is uh, they can neutralize the surface charge of cement particles. Okay. So for normal concrete on the surface of cement particles, we may have negative or positive charge. Okay. Because negative or positive charge uh, they will attract to each other. Uh, water reducing agent, the molecule can, first of all, neutralize all the positive charge. So it will make the surface all have negative charge. So the particle will repel each other, each other as a result. Uh, we also have some high range water reducer. Uh, we call that super plasticizer. Uh, it has much higher water reduction. So from 12 to close to 30%. Okay. Uh, for high strength concrete or self-consolidating concrete, uh, self-consolidating concrete is a special concrete which does not need any type of uh, consolidation. Okay. So for High strength concrete and SCC, uh, we must have superplasticizer in the concrete. So it's essential for high, high strength concrete and SCC. So superplasticizer should not affect any training agent and uh, retarder. Okay. Uh, but sometimes when we introduce more than one type of chemical admixtures, uh, they may influence each other. So this is something we should pay attention to. The dosage of uh, superplasticizer is around one to 3% by weight of cement. Okay. So as we remember, which is much lower compared to uh, flash or silica fuel, which is around 10 to 20 or even higher percent. Okay. So most of superplasticizer is polymeric materials such as SMF, okay, SNF, or CAE, okay. uh, CAE, which is polycarboxylate type of uh, superplasticizer, uh, is the most advanced, the most recent uh, state of art superplasticizer we use today. Okay. So. Right. so we talk about different type of mold and how superplasticizer work. So one of them is neutralize the surface charge. Uh, this is the second one. So we call the critical binding and dispersion. Okay. So before we add a superplasticizer, the cement particles will fluctuate it together. And when we introduce superplasticizer, this long molecule will wrap around on the surface of the particles and we defluctuate uh, the particles. So the, the concrete become more fluid. Okay. So uh, this mode of action is called physical binding. Another mode uh, which we just discussed earlier is called electrostatic repulsion. So the molecule will neutralize the surface charge. So all the particles will have negative charge. So they will repair each other. So that is the second mode. And the third mode is called steric repulsion. Uh, this is due to the nature of the molecule. The molecule is like this, has a long arm. They bind on the surface of the particles, uh, which is in the gray square. So the molecule of superplasticizer is showing the red lines. Okay. So due to the nature of the long arm of its molecule, uh, they will repel 
each other. So we call that steady repulsion. And this slide showing us how the compressive strength of concrete will be affected by uh, supervisor. Okay. Uh, the red line C means the control mix, which is the concrete with no supervisor. And the other mixes are concrete with different type of supervisor. Uh, generally speaking, if the water cement ratio does not change, uh, the strength should not be changed significantly. Okay. Right. So this is ESTM uh, standard by committee four, C494, okay. showing us different type of water reducer from low range, okay. which is uh, from five to 10%. So we have different type of uh, water reducer. Uh, type A is normal reducer. Type D is water reducer plus retarding agent, which means it can reduce the water requirement and also increase the setting time. Type E is the water reducer and accelerating, uh, which means it can reduce the setting time. Okay. We have high range water reducer uh, minimum is 12% water reduction. Uh, we also call that superplasticizer. Okay. Uh, again, we have normal and also uh, water reducer plus retarding increase setting time. Okay. So we said uh, if we use the superplasticizer to reduce water cement ratio, uh, the strength will, of course, increase because uh, water cement ratio is the number one factor con uh, controlling strength of concrete. But if we do not reduce the water cement ratio, just introduce a uh, supervisor to increase the workability, uh, the strength may also be increased because uh, it will make the concrete well dispersed and more homogeneous. Okay, so that may reduce the trapped air, so the strength may also be increased somehow, although it's not to the same extent uh, on the effect of reducing water cement ratio. Again, uh, if we design high strength concrete, we must have a uh, supervisor in your mixed design. In the end of the semester, uh, you're gonna design your own high strength concrete. Uh, also, we cannot cast your own concrete uh, as we did in previous semester, but uh, you're gonna submit your high strength concrete design um, and I will have a look and give you some comments and suggestions. Right. So this is a uh, water reducing agent. We also have corrosion inhibitors. Uh, corrosion inhibitors by its name, it will reduce the potential for corrosion. Uh, they have different type of corrosion inhibitors. Uh, we have anodic inhibitors or cathodic inhibitors or mixed. Okay. Uh, we'll discuss corrosion of reinforcement in more details in future lectures, okay. uh, but today you just remember we have some chemical admixtures which may help concrete to reduce the corrosion of concrete. Okay. All right. Shrinkage reducing admixtures. Uh, we know concrete may shrink due to different reasons. For example, dry shrinkage, uh, chemical shrinkage, autogenic shrinkage. Uh, we have a dedicated lecture on reasons for shrinkage of concrete and how we can compensate that. Okay. Uh, again, today you just remember we have some chemical measures which can reduce the shrinkage of concrete and make the concrete shrink less. Okay. Uh, 
shrinkage reduced admixture is working by reducing the surface tension of pore solution, which is the water inside the concrete. So reduce the surface tension of pore solution, so the shrinkage will be less. All right, so today we discussed major type of chemical admixtures. Okay. Uh, remember different admixtures and how they will change the concrete properties. For example, where why air in training agent can improve the concrete durability due to free salt cycles or due to sulfate attack or ASR, and why retarders and accelerator can increase the setting time or reduce the setting time. And we have you know, different type of accelerators by working on different compounds of concrete, for example, C3S or C3A. Okay. And why water reducer can help increase the workability or maintain the workability of concrete and reduce the water cement ratio. All right, so yeah, that's the end for today's lecture. Uh, remember, this week we will have our first lab, uh, which is uh, we mix some cement paste and observe the flowability. Okay, so 2.30 this afternoon, we have uh, first sessions. On Wednesday, 2.30, we have session number two, and Wednesday, 430, we have session number three. Okay. So uh, I will see some of you this afternoon, uh, again, in a Zoom meeting. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I have a quick question.